spray of it. It doesn't look good in there. Yes, I've forgotten this. Yeah, um. Well, here we are in the Green Meadow Waldorf School in Spring Valley, New York, or rather Chestnut Ridge. And uh, maybe the first thing that you can do is tell me your name. I'm Laura, Laura Langford Schnur. Okay, and uh, tell me your connection to the mystery play first. Well, I first became introduced to them back in 98 even before, because Barbara Reynolds was conducting here in um, this uh, area, and I joined, mm -hmm. so I could take a part, and they were going to go take this play, mm -hmm. where there would be four plays, all four plays presented in English, of course, one in from England, one from California, one from New York, and I think the other came from Australia, mm -hmm. thing mm -hmm. like that. So yeah. we took the fourth play, and, and so we practiced then, and I had an ulterior motive from going because I wanted to meet her mother who was living in Maria Reynolds. Maria Reynolds. It was Maria Reynolds. I heard that she had a special tuning and I'd look for her for a long time. Exactly. To meet yeah. her. And so, of course that's how but we of met course too. I was inter by doing this I was introduced into doing the mystery dramas with Barbara Reynolds. There you go. Just say a little mm -hmm. bit more about uh, your meeting with uh, Maria Reynolds and the book and the 432. Well, um, I, I knew when I heard about it many years before that this lady had a, a tuning she had come about and it just, <laughs> I knew it was right. And Although I'd never heard of it, I didn't know about different tunings. I just felt I have to meet this lady. Mm -hmm. So when it came about that I could, I I, I went and, and I and I also was taken by Bevis to the the big auditorium where they had a huge nine foot grand. Bevis Stevens, right? Yes, and he was her prime student of this. Um, but the I I talked with her and she told me about it and so forth. And I could go to the auditorium there, a special room. And where they had a huge nine foot um, grand tuned to the usual 440. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And another ordinary grand, uh, smaller mm -hmm. one, tuned to Maria Reynolds. And I might have that re reversed. Anyway, um, but I played, and he left me so I could play on it. I stayed there for about two hours, playing back and forth from one piano. Mm -hmm. the same thing to the other, and listening, listening carefully. And also, it was a different feeling for each, which became my prime observation. Was and by the end of two hours, there was no question. <laughs> yeah. And how I felt and the difference, the difference in the tunings of yeah. the four thirty two. So I came back to New York, and I um, immediately I've changed. I tuned my lyres that way and had my piano. Because that's and what I'm, you play. You play yes, the lyre and, and the never piano, changed. right? I'm, because it yeah. just satisfies. My soul so yeah. much more, yeah. Yeah. and others picked it up and and yeah. so forth. So I, um, whatever I do now, I always do because I notice a, quite a difference in how it affects people socially, even yeah. and it touches the heart more, and it just yeah. uh, the atmosphere comes alive more. I felt it in the Arithmetic School very strongly. Did you? Yeah, uh -huh. the, the, the 440 is not the tuning that mm -hmm. a piano should mm -hmm. have. Mm -hmm. So hang on a sec. Mm -hmm. So, um, I think it would be great mm -hmm. to find out, um, as I'm talking to youth on mm -hmm. the internet, and how do they find their path. And uh, mm -hmm. since you've had some experience in your life, of course, um, uh, how, how does this connect, like, out of your childhood? Were there any uh, turning points that you could point out? And, you know, because you 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 mm -hmm. you know we have mm -hmm. we have a path. We can either go mm -hmm. for a comfortable life that has the mm -hmm. normal things mm -hmm. or something. But there's sometimes a turning point mm -hmm. where you don't really know where you're going, but you have <laughs> yes. to go there. So maybe you can relate something like that. Well, I was born and raised in California uh, with three older siblings, and my parents were very religious, devout. Mm -hmm. Not in a super central, superficial way, but mm -hmm. they, it was true with them and, and simple folks. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I was raised that way. 
and didn't, um, never rebelled, but even went to a church college. But I had this deep yearning to find out what was happening in the world because they kind of protected me from the big wide world mm -hmm. and I had to know that, what that was. So mm -hmm. I explored and I lived uh, college in uh, other countries a few years and explored and had to find out that was my first um, destiny. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> and all along the way, of course, I was studying music and loved music, always playing music in school for whatever events or church. And so music was my first love. Mm -hmm. And um, in traveling, in actually ended up in Germany where, um, well, I had things that went quite not the way I had expected there, and um, I had a little misfortune, and I and, and ended up in a three-year three dark night of the soul. Of and, the soul. And, <laughs> and, and roughly what age I would came, that have been? Uh, Twenty, toward my 27, mm. 28. I came back to California, my home, but it took me about three years, you know, to mm -hmm. recover from that, or, or to find, and during that time, though, I explored and found, because the early religion, although I respected that, that there was much more to, to find that. besides that. So I I didn't know that there was. I just knew that I had to find something. Oh, there was nothing. Um, nothing. You know? yeah, yeah. So I was gradually exploring, and life was bringing little things to me, <laughs> guidances and... Then when I came to New York, um, I found pretty quickly anthroposophy, which was satisfied. Uh, yeah. I mean, it was what I'd been looking for, yeah. and finding little markers along the way. Yeah. But I found, um, and, and I realized along that during this darkness that there were two things that I had let go of in my exploration. You shouldn't ask me these things. <laughs> That's all right. Well, this is real life, you know. This is this that, is what we need. That were two things that were most important. And one was music. Mm -hmm. And the other was spirituality. Yeah. So this is what I now was finding. In other I words... I went back to and find it because, you know, I didn't have time to play and all that practice when I was traveling around the world but so this now there was a deeper commitment in understanding what I must and the love yeah so in, in other words that, that's why that's why I was saying mm -hmm. you know how do people find their passion you know how do they find their destiny how do they find what they're really meant to do in life well. <laughs> you know I mean and is there a boundary that is impenetrable between mm -hmm. the physical world and the spiritual world. You know, well, I, I mean, the way that Kant says, mm -hmm. you know. Well, I, I guess I wasn't thinking in that way or not. That was more of a heart person, an artistic person, a musician. And I followed the little guidances that came to me. Mm -hmm. There were, and I you know, firmly believe that we have guidance. Although it may feel like you have nothing, mm -hmm. there is. So gradually I found my way into a life that fed me deeply. And um, that um, one can only thank <laughs> that one is not alone. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Anyway, um, I came... I, and I was in New York then, and I gradually found my way into various facets of anthroposophy. One was Waldorf education, because I right. had been a teacher. Oh, yes. And this I was not satisfied, but now this deeply mm -hmm. satisfied. So that was a destiny. Mm -hmm. And um, so that was quite, uh, filled my life quite a bit with becoming a Waldorf teacher. And gradually found my way to my rightful husband, <laughs> mm -hmm. and we um, were guided to start a center. Mm -hmm. And um, it was um, an art center because he was an artist and I was a musician. Mm -hmm. But 
at the center of it was the spirituality. So mm -hmm. that consumed my life for a number of years, and until he died. And then and you didn't become a millionaire because of that. <laughs> Because I think that's one of the ingredients. Uh -huh. uh, no, I wasn't. You know? it was, I was never concerned with that. It was yeah. one's heart and one's... You do what you have to do. What you have to do. And um, so then I found my way to, <clears throat> to living nearby, um, not far away from this community, and um, for many years, and going to many, many conferences of all anthroposophic conferences and music conferences. So mm -hmm. I deepened my love and my knowledge of, of anthroposophic music by taking many of these, um, and I took the anthroposophic music therapy course. Oh, yes. Dorian course. Ah, oh, yes. And which was what I'd looked forward to and had, had become a music therapy mm -hmm. therapist already besides a music teacher. Right. Because right. my interest was more, much more in service and that's with Christ soul. Christopher. Christoph Andreas. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. yeah. We're Christoph Andreas Lindbergh. Lindbergh, right. And my deepest uh, interest was really in helping souls through music and music therapy. And so mm -hmm. through this, I learned a great deal, op widened my horizons of the value and the sensitivity of music much beyond what I'd learned in regular music training and mm -hmm. um so this is what I hope I bring to both a church and to the mystery dramas, dramas, is this deep love and exploration, much exploration of tones mm -hmm. and, and, and music and mm -hmm. different instruments and what they bring to the I soul. Know. I know. So in the mystery drama, um, I, I ex exercise this a lot by, by you know, tuning into the, the play and the script and the meaning and hearing almost what tones or what instruments would fit there to support exactly and it's not as um it's not an and it's it's mm -hmm. original work it's your original yes, work and that you bring to it yes and others that um, mm -hmm. join in yes in, in, yes basically no i'm talking about mm -hmm. in 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 um, in a, in a different way than it's uh -huh. done in Dornach when they do the mystery place in yes, europe yes because what's i yeah. i'm doing what we're doing differently that just came out of intuition. Exactly. Out one of tunes your own in work. Not, it's not for performance no. uh, and for the music to stand alone as music. No. It's to let the play draw it out of me yeah. as to what it is and support. So it's and not ever new. I have ever new. You see, because if you if you take the, the, the score, let's say, from from what was done in Dorna for many years, mm -hmm. then you're just repeating something. Uh -huh. But the important thing is to, to bring something new out of out of what is living here in America. Yes. And so, what what comes yeah. What is allowed to come of, through me and others? And who who is that, there? <laughs> that uh, just tune into the play itself, and it draws out what's needed to support. As I yeah. said, my my music yeah. is a life of service, not yeah. not there to perform or to yeah. to make a piece of music that um, <clears throat> we can perform and say this my name. Yeah, yeah. We can put it on CD and so forth. Exactly. It's not that at all. It's just no. if it survives and lives to support this drama. That's what there it's you go. for. Yeah. So um, that's what we've been doing there. Unfortunately, others, um, you know, you will hear a piece this afternoon, the Sun Realm, which is the, mm -hmm. in the spiritual mm -hmm. world. Hopefully, mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. um, and it was original. And then my friend uh, Brigida um, Balton composed. I said, "You do Saturn, I'll do the Sun," and she is tunes in most intuitively to mm -hmm. the sounds that support and put you almost transport you into mm -hmm. this this realm and, and mm -hmm. <laughs> So well, that's what that that's what is, um, I mean. And, and uh, because all, I have many, many instruments that I've gathered through the music ther therapy training. Right. And they're all, none of them are conventional instruments. Mm -hmm. Most all of them have been created um, by handmade by craftsmen. Yeah, like. That's so sweet. Can you make it work? Yeah, but I won't now. No, you can't. Go.
actually I actually filmed that one. Did you? Yeah, so we can put that in between. I would love to uh, film it when it's being used. You know, but others come great. from instruments that have been specially made with those who are intuitively mm -hmm. searching for tones yes. that are a little more special and reach the the soul and more yeah. sensitive than the mass produced um, exactly. instruments of yeah. the orchestra which are lovely too. Yeah. Now in my sun piece I did we were using hand bells which are you know um, they're they're Maybe. I would say conventional at this point, yeah. but the, the brilliance... But not used too often in No, in no, but, but I combined them with a violin, which is a conventional instrument, but a shakuhachi flute. There you go. Which provides the warmth and the light and the brilliance. Yeah. Yeah. You know? And of course, I was perfect. privileged already to hear that because mm -hmm. we've had the plays like Wednesday, Thursday, Friday mm -hmm. and now now today on Saturday mm -hmm. we're seeing the whole mm -hmm. thing so because it's more than six hours long so yes. you know I mean mm -hmm. I, I, I can appreciate mm -hmm. so I hope that I can record some of that so well, I hope we'll you see. Can. All right. And uh, the other instruments I use though are all quite unconventional they're made handmade like well the gongs there have been gongs for centuries but these are handmade especially the by the quality I yeah. especially relate to yeah yeah and um, the um, what else uh, another place I use like the crota which is an early cello I mean, mm -hmm. wonderful tone mm -hmm. and um, other like the psaltery which is an ancient instrument but it's new <laughs> and it's called a psaltery Yes. You might have to show me some of these things. Well, I don't think I have it with me today, but I'm just no, trying but, to say well, the, uh, yeah. the, the tones that we come up with. And some of the instruments are are things we've made, even with some of these masters who've come to help us make, yeah. like the metal instruments. Yeah, yeah. One of our, our, our people here um, in the music group makes metal instruments, having learned from one and of the masters. And what's his name? Oh, her name is Sarah Weber. Okay, okay. And she has some lovely, wonderful tones, and uh -huh. she's hammered and made in her shop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you see, this is. <laughs> but we use these yeah, in yeah, the yeah. dramas, and and each, you know, each out of our collection of many different tones, we feel in each scene what is needed, what is it drawing for, what tones exactly does it need and want to yeah. support it. And to, to, to prepare our souls because yeah. you know we are being prepared for mm -hmm. uh, for a certain moon, mood in the mystery play. Yes, exactly. So, so. I mean for now I really do thank you. It's yeah. uh, what a privilege to hear a little mm -hmm. bit of the inside mm -hmm. story of what's happening mm -hmm. and like I say uh, you know the young people I mean, our next generation, um, mm -hmm. I hope they do find ways like many of the people that I've interviewed. They listen so, to their heart yeah, and listen yeah. not to their peers who are yeah. taking, doing uh, all sorts of or, things. That, or the elders listen. that are or yes, all exactly. on GMOs and fluoride. <laughs> yes, yes, but the, some, yeah. somewhere there is always guidance yeah. um, if yeah. one is true to one's inner voice. Yeah. And sometimes that's very subtle. And the voices around are much louder. You That's have to for sure. Listen carefully. That's for sure. <laughs> All right. Well, thank, thank you. you. Thank you so much.